Hi everyone, um, so a lot of people ask me about how to do the uh, gyro flow stabilization for the Canon EOS M uh, footage. And while you watch this uh, quick intro, um, I will just do a, a quick setup of what's gonna need, uh, what's gonna be needed for for this um, exercise. You will need a sensor logger uh, application, which you, which you will find uh, in the link. Uh, it's an Android app. I mean, I don't have an iPhone. Uh, I don't work in uh, Apple. Um, environment so you will have to find that application or, or uh, a different application for gyro uh, sensor recording um, on your own but for those who are uh, fortunate in using the Android applications and working in Google environment you will be able to, to download this app for free 100% uh, there are limitations that I will explain in this video and uh, I will not go through a lot of stuff uh, concerning your particular uh, lens uh, and mode setup because they are individual to people who are filming on Canon ESM. Uh, they are not individual to uh, the limitations of the uh, of the Magic Lantern crop mode, uh, which I will be uh, talking about. Uh, without further ado, let's jump in into our first step. Uh, as you can see, we are now in a sensor logger application. Uh, this is a pretty uh, robust uh, application that uh, records all the sensors that are available uh, uh, on your uh, phone. And uh, as you can see, right, right now I'm trying to record something, but it says like there's a limit of 10. That's a free app um, limitation. So you you will have to be able to record only 10 records at the same time but after that if you uh, delete all of them uh, you will be able to create new recordings uh, right now we're jumping in into uh, some basic settings of, of uh, uh, how to record stuff uh, with that app. It's pretty simple and pretty straightforward. For example, uh, I don't know what kind of sensor are you having. I have uh, the OnePlus 9 Pro uh, offers a TDK uh, 500 Hz uh, sampling rate uh, sensor. So it's pretty good. Uh, I never use 500 because I'm not sure that it can record 500. So why I put 200? It's because it is recommended by the gyro flow as in, well, the minimum or optimal, right? And uh, as you can see, I put 200. I mean, even though I can record 500, I just still use 500, uh, 200. So, what we're going to do next, uh, we're going to export this to um, to a CSV file. It's basically an archive that you can, I mean, I don't know, export. I usually export through my Google Drive right on the fly, uh, right on the fly. Because, for example, when you uh, face that limitation of 10, like, for example, 10 scenes, right, 10 shots, and then, oh, uh, I need to do something. So you basic, I basically upload it to, to my Google Drive, uh, all of them, like 10, 10 recordings, uh, I upload them, delete them from the sensor app, and I start the, the new recording from, from scratch. So another 10, and then, uh, you know, it's sleep repeat and stuff like that. Um, what else? Uh, that's it. Once you, exported it into um, into zip file uh, you just download it in post in post production you just download it to your files and uh, when you extract those uh, CSV files so you will have like gyro flow, uh, gyroscope accelerometer magnetometer those are three things that are actually needed uh, in most cases but specifically for this exercise you will need just one which is gyroscope CSV. Uh, what I do, I usually rename them. I rename them. Uh, and it's very hard thing because you will need to follow the sequence. So if you do 17 shots, you will need to have 17 zip files, 17 gyroscope data files. 
So once uh, you are in a Gyroflow interface, you will need to put uh, three things. So the video information, which is the uh, video footage uh, you, you've, you've shot, and some lens profile and emotion data. So one by one, let's, uh, let's discuss what's, uh, what's what. Um, video information. So um, I will take the example uh from 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 some just random shots that i did uh simultaneously recording the gyra uh stabilization let's say we have this uh m25 1531 file right so what do we have here uh so this is a pretty stable handheld shot but uh, there's one thing about gyroflow you cannot expect it to be like uh, a lifesaver in terms of um, stabilizing the shaky footage I mean uh, if you are filming um, on your camera you will need to maintain some sort of uh, delta in terms of uh, uh, shakiness of, of your footage and so on so once you have uh, your file input you will need to um, select the lens profile usually usually you would say something like here in the search box uh, Canon EOS M and then um, your lens uh, uh, which in my case was Helios but see uh this is a public profile which was uploaded by somebody prior to uh to my footage so uh instead of this i'm just i'm just going to open uh, the lens profile that i did calibrated with gyroflow it's a completely different topic uh, you need to uh, to Google it, you, you need to go to the Gyroflow uh, website to, um, uh, to see how to calibrate your specific uh, lens and your specific settings uh, that you're using on the camera body. In my case, it's, a, uh, it's Magic Lantern, so it's nothing just standard it's not 1080p footage it's a 1080p footage in 3 by 3 crop mode and so on so people who know uh people who know how to work with these things uh they will you know i hope uh you will create your uh profiles um i don't know why but this profile was uploaded a couple of days before uh uh, prior to me recording this, uh, maybe it will propagate somewhere in a few days. But this is specifically Helios 44 M7 uh, anamorphic mod lens, which was manually uh, modded by me uh, by just adding a, an oval insert uh, inside the lens hood. Um, okay, so here we go. We selected the lens profile uh, for this specific footage. Uh, so it's individual. Uh, if you're taking this footage with uh, TTR design 17 mil in a completely different uh, aspect ratio with a completely different resolution, it has to be specific. It has to match uh, that calibration. Um, so one, two, and... Uh, the most interesting part is the motion data. So we're taking motion data from the sensor logger app and uh, I have it here. So here's going M25 1531, right? M25 uh, 1531 gyroscope CSV. So that's the CSV file that contains all the data recorded during that uh, time I, I was taking that footage. Uh, what I usually do um, before even going into any uh, uh, synchronizations, uh, I go to rotation because in my case, the, uh, the fold was uh, 
rotated, the pitch of the phone was rotated 90 degrees. So it means that 90 degrees correction here on the rotation. If you don't do this, it will simply not, I mean, it will synchronize somehow, but it will not be a 100% match because, you know, the axes are uh, in the wrong position. Uh, if you want to see, that's the orientation of the sensor right now. That's uh, with this rotation. Uh, for example, if I put zero, if I put zero, it will be like this, right? So if I put 90 degrees, uh, yeah, so gyroflow doesn't actually show uh, the, um, it, it, it will show the orientation of the camera, not the sensor data. But anyway, I mean, gyroflow, take a note. <laughs> you need to do this because by just visually matching those things, people will be able to uh, stabilize the footage much, much more easier. But anyway, so I apply the rotation because I know how my uh, sensor logger was, uh, which, which was my phone, uh, was positioned at that time. And, uh, and from now, I just take three, uh, let's say somewhere in the middle, auto sinks here, one here, Let's just wait. Uh, then one, for example, here. So take note here, it's uh, minus 2,696, right? Minus 2,694, which is like a, a, a green means a good deviation. And somewhere in the back, in the end. So it should be within the same margin, right? 2695, it's a, good, it's a good thing. But still, you will have, see, uh, you will have some shakiness here. I'm not gonna describe the stabilization, synchronization stuff here. Uh, I will just go into one thing which is called the um, a rolling shutter because that's important for this camera for this footage for this kind of stabilization work so if you if you if you look pretty if you look closely here you will see some some jelly see the jello and that jello actually corresponds to a rolling shutter I mean, I don't know why uh, gyroflow people don't invest a lot of time in uh, explaining this, but um, the way you move the camera, the, the way the, the, the sensors record this, the, these kind of data on, uh, on the loggers, uh, it all affects the rolling shutter. What they say, you need to correct the rolling shutter and then resynchronize. Uh, which actually, uh, to me, is a pretty, um, well, mm, a 50-50 concept because I had a lot of footages where I just clicked the rolling shutter correction and then put it on 16, and this is specific for Canon ESM, somewhere in between 16 to 16.5 milliseconds, and boom, that's stable. You know why? Because the rolling shutter correction is now uh, works uh, up and down, left and right. But um, I guess uh, that's the best you can get from this kind of stabilization, I guess, uh, by coupling a third party uh, accelerometer gyroscope data. By the way, so pay attention. Uh, when you record data from any source, I mean, it can be a motion cam, raw uh, um, application um, that supplies uh, three type of uh, data streams, which is magnetometer, accelerometer, and gyroscope. And they're all supplied in three different files, right? 
three different CSVs. If you record uh, through sensor logger, it will also be supplied, I mean, the free version, will also be supplied in separate CSVs. Because the best way you can get data inside GyroFlow is to use the uh, Gyro CSV format they kindly provided the documentation for that you need to be at least a Python uh, person to uh, do some um, coding to make sure that those three CSVs you get from the logger in separate files end up in a GSV file. Which is actually another good thing for for Gyroflow guys to 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 create a parser, uh, a tool for Windows, Mac, whatever, even an Android phone, to uh, combine those three data streams into one. Because here, this is a statistic. You see, I'm lacking anything from accelerometer here. It's zero which means I cannot use the lock the horizon stuff and there's no other way I can input a separate CSV file for that gyroflow guys I mean you spend a lot of time on on doing this good good work just add another open file uh, dialog here and let people add the accelerometer and, or magnetometer things here. That's one thing. Another thing is that, and, and we're done. So simply here, uh, that's the, um, you got a stabilized footage. I mean, it's pretty much like 97.5% stabilized to my knowledge. Um, you can play with these parameters like zoom and speed and stuff, depending on your uh, motion pattern and stuff. But um, in export, I mean, I usually export this in ProRes HQ or uh, uh, Quad 4, and then I upscale it in Topaz AI. That's it. But here, I mean, okay, let's let's do another one. Let's do um, let's do another one, which is, for example, sorry. Let's do another video file here. Um, mm -hmm, 1524, what is that? Here we go. See, pretty jittery, pretty shaky. Uh, I mean, 58 millimeter lens is pretty shaky if, you're, if you don't have an uh, in-body stabilization or lens stabilization. Uh, you will end up with your body shakes, your heartbeat shakes and so on so you will need something like gyro flow to stabilize it right 1524 1524 corresponding file gyroscope here here we go right uh you don't need to change anything here because pitch stays here 90 percent uh, nine degrees and then uh just do the same somewhere in the middle in in, in the beginning Somewhere in the end, so minus three or three nine. So three or four, pretty much the same. Uh, there's also this gyro bias, uh, uh, which you could avail, but um, for that, every single footage you start should be from a static position. So on a tripod somewhere sitting on the floor, then you can actually uh, eliminate the gyro bias. But to me, uh, I don't find it any uh, good for uh, for most of the cases I use this for. So, okay, here we go. It's pretty stable, right? Pretty stable. But see, there's little things, there's little things like so the rolling shutter. And then again, rolling shutter, 16, boom, stable. So this is basically how I do it. Uh, you, have, you have any questions, uh, ask them in comments below and 
I'll continue my work. Like and subscribe. Bye-bye, guys.